Welcome to Dallas and Eric at the Whiteboard. Today's episode is sponsored by AJ's Equipment Cleaning. AJ's Equipment Cleaning offers state-of-the-art sterilization cleaning for your gym and all of its fitness equipment. Contact AJ's Equipment Cleaning at gmail.com. We're also brought to you by Dad Bod Apparel. Visit dadbodapparel.com and use discount code WHITEBOARD. We're also brought to you by Black Crane Supplements. Use promo code WELCOME to get 20% off your entire order. BlackCraneSupplements.com We're also brought to you by Fire Lotto, a cryptocurrency lottery system with a prize pool of almost $1 million. Go to BlackCraneSupplements.com, click on Fire Lotto, and follow the very simple instructions. Good luck. We're also brought to you by StashCo. StashCo offers a wide variety of beard oils, creams, and waxes, and all sorts of different accessories. Use promo code CRANE20 to get 20% off your order at stashcompany.com. As always, we're brought to you by CrossFit of San Mateo. For all the details that CrossFit San Mateo can offer you, Visit CrossFitSM.com. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I've been following this lady on social media for like three years. I just heard her voice for the first time this morning. I had no clue she was Australian. Really? Totally threw me off. Oh, and I was because she looks like she'd have kind of like that, that Southern Bale kind of accent. She'd be a real sweetheart. And I was like, nope. Whoa. Whoa. And I was like, not gonna lie, kind of a buzzkill. <laughs> I don't like that kind of accent. I'm gonna be a fan of accents in general. She's Australian, mate. Yeah, I'll yeah. put a shrimp on her, Bobby. <laughs> 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 I got a couple of rando questions I'm gonna ask you at the end. And it has to be yes or no. Ooh. Yup. <laughs> okay, <laughs> good. Okay. Get a little more, you know, Joe Rogan style, see what kind of things we get. That'd be fun. Oh, man. You know, uh, who's that guy? He always does a lot of stuff with Joey Diaz. Yeah. That guy's fucking hilarious. They don't, I like because they don't, they've been moderately in the industry, although I've heard a lot of things about Joe Rogan. About how he's a, uh, a, uh, a shrill sent in to kind of control the opposing narrative and shift things on the right side and the conservative side in the way that is moderate enough to where you think you have enough of what's going on, but it's really not. Because hmm. um, he's been in the game for a long time. Yeah, because there are, what, like 1,300 episodes of a podcast? Well, I mean, even before that, like he was oh, back yeah. in, well, he was in sitcoms in the early 90s, late 80s. Yeah. Uh, and he's got Jewish roots to a lot of the producers in Hollywood. Hmm. And so they're saying that he's kind of been... Is he like Illuminati conspiracy kind of mm-hmm. thing? Yeah. To where he'll kind of out it or he'll, he'll talk openly about some of those kind of things. But every once in a while he'll get caught up in like... He'll catch himself mm-hmm. in a few things. And then... Uh, yeah, he's an interesting guy. I don't know if I trust him all the way. I mean, not that I'm you know, doing business with him. But uh, he's an interesting guy. I'd like to... He's definitely someone I'd, I'd like to at least have dinner with and just kind of yeah. pick his brain. Because I think he's more of an insider than we know. Oh, for sure. For he's, he's not like a, hey, just a fear factor guy, and then I went to do some MMA. I mean, he's definitely like... Well, his background in MMA is actually pretty impressive. It is. I know. No, that's true. I think that's why they, they put him up there. Um, but he's... Yeah, I think he's definitely like... A, he's been in He's been in a lot of industries for a long he's time. He's an actor. Kind of yeah. Guy. Yeah, what do you think of Alex Jones? I love Alex Jones. Uh, one, I really like the podcast that they did together. But yeah. I but I like Alex Jones, one, just as a person. I think he'd be someone that I that I would hang out with. Mm-hmm. Probably not on a regular basis, but a couple times. A couple times, yeah. He seems like he'd be pretty intense. He's bringing all the energy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> his wife taught. Is she? Oh, shit. I was like, oh, that must be his daughter. And he goes, look at my beautiful wife. And it's like, <laughs> good for you. But he's got like three kids. Uh, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. But um, no, I like him. I think 
I think, you know, when, when you do that for as long as you have, like, you do make some really good connections. So it's kind of like, yeah. you know, the fitness industry, like, you know, we've got some really neat connections. But, I mean, like, the stuff that that guy knows or, you know, at least has accessible. Some type of, that's what I'm saying. But here's my here's my thing. This is what always kind of gets me to go, um, um, one, he has roots in Hollywood. Back to work. Who, Alex Jones? Yeah. Yeah. Two. Well, he, he said that he's had, you know, family, you know, up in the CIA and things yeah. like that. So, like, so he's kind of like. He's kind of tucked in there. Yeah, and that is shady just to begin with. Anything post Kennedy, especially in the Bush era. And then. Do, 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 three. Um, somebody who knows as much as he does and mm-hmm. tells as much as he does. If you were really one of the outlier truth guys or really finding this stuff out, he would have been dead a long time ago. Yeah, yes and no. We can make that argument. Because nobody knew him until maybe five years ago, six years ago. Okay, no, 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 I'll even say 10. But he was doing this back in the 80s. Yeah. And then the 90s. Um, dozens upon dozens of journalists – Doing the same thing, trying to enter the same areas, all dead. Mm-hmm. Breitbart, dead. How is he still there? And he supposedly knows more than most everybody. I think he's kind of like a Snowden in that he's a leaker of things. So you go, oh yeah, this has been, this has been talked about. Oh yeah, this is a thing. Oh, this is real. Oh yeah. Kind of like that soft, soft leak, soft mm-hmm. lead in. Yeah. Um, because that's what Snowden was. Could be a mixture between that, but I also think he's one of those people where people look at him and go, well, that guy is just crazy. Because one of the guys that I, uh, I used to train with on a regular basis and who introduced me to one of the HRT doctors I do some work with mm-hmm. is former CIA. Oh, really? And um, I, I just was telling someone this story the other day. And if you met him, you'd be like, that guy's just a fucking whack job. Because the stories that he tells you, it's it's the same way that like Alex Jones will tell you. It's eight stories in the time frame that it takes to do no, one. one. And they're just bop, 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 bop. Yeah. And. Because you don't have the time to go down the entire rabbit hole to each story. Right. That makes sense. And so it's kind of like getting like cliff notes for like eight movies. But he speaks five languages fluently. And so he's trying to tell me all these stories. And it's like, you know you know, what's going on, man? Like, you know, you're kind of like all over the place, like this. And he was like, oh yeah, like ever since I got blown up in Russia, like I've just never really been the same. (laughs) And and he lives, he lives up his shorts and he's got these like really bizarre scars, like all through basically like from his hip down to his knee on, uh, let's see, his right leg. And he's telling me the story about, you know, where he's, he's running away from these people shooting at him. He gets caught up in some barbed wire and then trips this explosion and it blows up. He goes, uh, he goes, yeah, I couldn't walk for like four months. And he's like telling me these stories about like how like a year after like he got back into the States, like they were still pulling like chunks of like metal out of him. And uh, he had like one piece and like he's telling me part of the story. And I'm like, this motherfucker stole this from Iron Man. He was like, there was like a piece of metal that was like kind of like in like a blood vessel blocking some blood flow, but it wasn't like, it caused an internal bleeding. And I'm like, what What the fuck are you talking about? And then so fast forward a couple of years later, I'm hanging out with some of my military friends, you know, who all do, you know, weird, you know, oddball jobs that, you know, they're all sort of secrecy and some stuff they can say, some stuff they can't. And I'm telling him, I'm like, oh, you know, and it turns out that, you know, some of my friends have high up friends. I'm just like, and I grew up with this guy and I said his name and they're like, oh shit, you know that guy? Oh really? And I was like, oh, and they're like, yeah. wait, 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 describe him. <laughs> and I gave him the description and they're like, what does he look like? And I gave the best visual description I could. And they're like, holy fuck, that guy's a legend. And I'm like, really? And I'm like, cause I like him, but he's kind of a weirdo. And they're like, oh no, he's a total weirdo. But he, he got really fucked up in Russia and they told me some of the stuff that they heard, which was the story that he had said, plus some more additional information that he left out. And, uh, I get the guy on the podcast. <laughs> so 
I haven't talked to this guy in a couple years. One time he calls me up out of the blue and, uh, and every time he called me, he's always sounding like he's like almost going to be like in tears. And I answer the phone. I'm like, Hey Dan, what's going on? He was like, Hey man, what's going on? <laughs> I was like, you all right? He's like, no, no, not really. And usually like when you call, he'd be like, Hey man, do you, uh, you want to go to the gym? And I'm like, yeah, sure. You want to, you want to pick me up? And I'm like, uh, okay, I can pick you up. Hey, hey, before you come over, do me a favor. Can you pick me up a Red Bull? I don't have any cash on me. Yeah, I'll pick you up a Red Bull. He's like, give me the sugar-free kind. I like this. Like, okay. This has been going on for years. That's like, hilarious. And uh, so, like, I mean, he knew me, like, when I was just coming up in the bodybuilding scene, like, just starting to get kind of freaky. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. So his dad is a land developer. Oh. And his wife runs the company with with his dad. And he chills. Well, he does He does some work, too. Like, he helps out the dad, but basically he just kind of, yeah. like, collects his government money and then just does go out to steroids. Dude, I would love to be in the CIA. And uh, so, so, because he's got his, you know, weird leg injuries and stuff like that, he doesn't train legs. So the dude is maybe five, maybe five nine on a good day. He's not a tall guy. 24 inch arms. No, no synthol, no oil, just, just boom. He doesn't train back. He only trains chest and arms. That's it. I shit you not. The guy's like, F it. Seven days a week. He doesn't take a day off. So I got a call from, uh, from a, a mutual friend of ours, and they're like, uh, we need to like do something about Dan. And I was like, oh, Dan's Dan. I'm like, what did he do now? Uh, well, he's never come off any of the gear. He's never cycled? No. He just, once he started, he just never stopped. And the doses just kept getting higher and higher. And I was like, okay, well, what, how bad is it now? And they're like, well, he's doing like 1,500 milligrams of test. And I'm like, okay. I mean, like, granted, at that time, that's the dose that yeah. I was doing. And I was much bigger than everybody. And, uh, and then they're like, well, now he's doing a bunch of growth hormone. Now he's doing like the better part of like six IUs a day that we're getting, you know, from from a real yeah, pharmacy. Yeah, a real thing. Yeah, a real thing. Not like some weird, like, shitty Chinese stuff that yeah. makes your hands go numb. And uh, and he was doing, like, 200 milligrams of Anadrol a day, plus, like, 100 milligrams of Winstrol a day, plus he was starting to stack D-ball before he worked out just for a better pump. And I was like, this guy's not going to have a kidney left. It's like, <laughs> what the hell? And I'm like, how long has this been going on for? And he's like, oh, at least six months. I'm like, the guy's been doing this for six months straight. He's like, yeah. He's like, you haven't seen Dan? And I was like, no, like, I've been so busy. He was like, yeah, his skin looks like it's going to just, like, fall off like a meth addict. And I'm like, oh, fuck, i got to contact this guy. So I contact him. I'm like, little man, Robert called me. Like, what's going on? And uh, and he goes, Robert's overdramatic. I'm fine. He's like, I was only in the hospital for a couple hours. I'm like, you didn't say anything about the hospital. <laughs> oh, man. But, uh, yeah, I mean, he was... Dan was just kind of, oh, well, so, so when he called me for the last time, I'm in Costco and, uh, and I, I just had my kid in like two weeks yeah. after the kid was born. Like, you know, still had like the new baby smell on, mm-hmm. fresh up, fresh out of the package and uh, still had a gift receipt from the store there you go. and brand new <laughs> and he calls me up and he was like, Hey, are you busy? I was like, well, I'm in Costco right now. What's going on? Do you, uh, do you have a couch I can sleep on? And I was like, what? maybe? Why? <laughs> and he was like, well, I'm hiding from the police right now. No, motherfucker, <laughs> I don't have a couch for you to sleep on. And he was like, I was like, what's going on? And he goes, my dad got indicted. And I was like, he's a land developer. Yeah, it's more complicated than that. And I was like, well, what else is going on? Well, uh, they sent out a thing that myself, uh, basically I have to go to court and testify against my dad and my wife. And I was like, oh, yeah, I can't really help you out there, dude. Yeah. And uh, he was like, no, no, it's okay. I'm, uh, I'm down in Monterey. I'll just hang out here until the whole thing blows over. And I'm like, what do you mean until it blows over? Like, you're going to send out a warrant for your arrest. Like, it's not just going to blow over. And he's like, ah, I'll figure something out. 
and then hung up. That's the last time I ever heard from him. Dang. Who's that? That's trippy. Do you think he's still? When was that? Three years ago? Yeah, almost four years ago. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, that's, I'm that's, how you, that's how you learn is from trial no, it, it is. Um, so, <laughs> so someone told me the other day they're like, you know, you you, uh, you take something away from every relationship, whether you know it's an intimate relationship where you're dating someone, uh, a business relationship, any kind of relationship you take you you take a learning you know uh, chunk from. Yeah. And I was like, that's true. And they're like, when it comes down to like relationships, that is. Like everyone gets you closer to the right one. No, like I'm like, well, if that's true, I fucking passed it. <laughs> but I was sitting there scrolling through. I don't ever really look at my personal Instagram anymore, just because I have to do so much for the business one. Mm-hmm. And I forgot that I've been following this girl for a while. She doesn't know it yet, but she'll marry me. I mean, I'd marry hmm. her. Marry her. Marry her. I'm going to contact her from the business page and be like, <laughs> you don't know this yet. You'll make me. I wonder where your daughter gets it from. <laughs> She's such a shithead. <laughs> You're going to bring it by, Harvey, this is her. This is her. This is my little Mary. <laughs> but, but she, she was mouthing off to this kid the other day, and I was trying so hard to keep a straight face, but it was really fucking funny. Oh my god! So I told you, when she wants something, you know, when she sees me do interactions with other business people or people who contact me that want, you know, money from me or something like that, you got to earn it. Mm-hmm. Whatever it is, sell me on it. So I started making her sell me on stuff that she wanted. She wants a toy, sell me on it. You want candy, sell me on it. You know, whatever it is. You got to sell me on it. You need to tell me a very detailed description of what it is that you want, why you want it, and why you think you deserve it. You got to be able to hit all three. If you give me anything, if you give me anything less, you're going to get shit on me. And I'll give you two tries. If you can't do it by the second try, chance is over. St. UNICEF, fucking earn it. And so she's gotten so good at it in a very short duration of time that it's starting to get a little bit scary. So I went to school to pick her up early, and I was just kind of observing, just kind of watching how she interacts. And uh, and some little girl was like, "Hey, Audrey, can I play with that?" I swear, this kid stops, looks at her, and goes, "Sell me on it." <laughs> and I had to jump in, and I'm like, "You can't tell another you you can't tell another kid that. Only I can tell you stuff like that. It's dad thing." And she was like, "Why?" And I'm like, "Cause I pay the bills." She stops, looks back at the kid. My dad pays the bills. He can do whatever he wants. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, now all the teachers and the other parents there are looking at me, but I got to keep that going with my kid. So I'm just mm-hmm. like, it's right, I pay the bills. <laughs> do what I want. I'm crazy when I like. Yeah, I was like, get the fuck car. <laughs> but <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're driving it was it yesterday and we're on the freeway and we're, we just hopped on 101 and she was like, this is the way to target. Well, it's like, it is, but we're not going there. I want to go to target. Why? I want a toy. But oh, you're funny. <laughs> and she was like, I was really good today. I don't like, well, you should be good every day. Yeah. But I was really good today. And I'm like, uh, no. No. <laughs> nice try. And she goes, no, 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 no. I want two toys. No, no. One toy. And candy. Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm driving and I'm looking at her in the rear view mirror. I'm like, who are you talking to? And she was like, and I'm like, you want a toy and candy from Target? Yeah. She crosses her arms. And looks away and goes, I was really good today. <laughs> I love you. I couldn't even be mad at it. it was, but I'm, tr- I'm trying to keep really a straight good. face because I don't want to feed into it. And I'm just like, you were really good? Yeah. And I was like, were you? She was like, ask the teacher. Real snooty. And I was like, 
Fine, I will. So I pull out my phone and I was like, which teacher? All of them. Ooh. And I was like, all right, well, give me a name. So who should I call and ask for? Um, maybe Teacher Sahar. And I was like, which one's that one? She was like, you know her. She's the lady. <laughs> and I'm like, well, what's she look like? She looks like a lady. I'm like, okay, what, what color's her hair? What color's her skin? Uh, brown. Brown for what? Everything. She's just brown. And I was like, oh my goodness. you're going to get me sued. <laughs> <laughs> my brown <laughs> teacher. And, yeah, that's what I'm fearing. <laughs> and I'm <laughs> just like, oh, there's a lawsuit waiting to happen. <laughs> and so I'm like, okay, uh, so I just I try and keep the conversation going, trying to just get more details, yeah. and more information, try to just make her brain work. And I was like, well, you know, does she have an accent? No. Are you sure? What does she sound like? She sounds like Teacher Sahar. But she I was like, like, yeah, she sounds like Teacher Sahar. Yeah, and I was like, okay, well, uh, <laughs> so you need does, to work with. I was like, uh, so I started throwing curveballs, questions I wouldn't normally ask her. I'm like. Does, does she like me? She was like, what? I was like, does Teacher Sahar think I'm cute? She goes, yeah, you're adorable. <laughs> I, can't argue with that. I was like, high five, let's go get you a toy. <laughs> <laughs> but no candy. Why? Why? I so, look really good. <laughs> but I just love how she just crossed the arm. She goes, I was really good. <laughs> I she invented a gift for candy for that day. <laughs> the kid. The stuff that that kid comes up with is so Ooh. bizarre. But like, you know, does, does George Jones start making like the other dolls like have conversations? Oh yeah. And you're just listening and you're like, what are you talking about? Ooh, exactly. I watch her Punisher dolls. She what? puts them down for like yeah, spankings. What? Yeah. And then separates <laughs> them. Okay, you're going to have to go night night because you didn't listen to me. <laughs> it's like, what, we never see some of this kind of stuff. Yeah, and that's funny. when I'm like, what are, you, what are you watching? Like, what are these other kids mm -hmm. doing at school that you're picking this stuff up on? And she started, you know, like, the Barbie was, you know, doing whatever. And I was like, and all I could hear was just like this, like, nah, kind of, because like, she gives she gives the dolls different voices. Like, they become these characters. And, uh, and some of them are kind of, they're like really over the top. And she, she stopped me in the hallway the other day with the Barbie. And she, she puts Barbie's arm up. And, you know, Barbie's hand doesn't move. It's no. just stuck in this, like, see of high, you know, like, mm -hmm. white supremacist, like, thou shalt not pass. Hmm. And I was like, what are you doing? She's like, you will no, you no move. And there's only Asians on that floor for the apartment building. And I was like, what are you doing? She's like, you no move. And I was oh, like, I shut up, like, just oh get God. the house. She was like, no, we're already home. And oh I'm my like, God. I'm like, oh God. <laughs> Stop. This is funny. Yeah. Well, we have a majority of them, maybe, maybe two. We play this game where we come by and we go, hey, and she goes, <laughs> hey. So we were in line at Target, and Judy said that she would hold Georgiana <laughs> over her shoulder. And she said, George and I kind of sat up and went back this way, and she heard this lady behind her laughing. And so she, you know, she looks back, and there's this Asian lady. She looks over at Georgiana, and Georgiana's like, <laughs> just all squinty eyes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, with the Asian lady, what are you going to do to a two year old? But it's just so funny. <laughs> so, Audrey, Audrey was at my mom's house the other day just so that she could have grandma time and I could finish some office work. <clears throat> and I just, I get this text. Have you ever been in a store with Audrey, dot, 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 and a midget? <laughs> and I'm just, I know how absurd my kid is. Oh, and yeah. so I'm just, I'm, I'm already mortified. And I'm just like, oh God, <laughs> what did she say? And so uh, instead of grandma, we call my mom Bobby. <laughs> And he just wrote back in quotations, Bobby, look, 
his head is so big and he's so little. <laughs> what do you do if you're a midget? <laughs> so I was like, I'm assuming that he was in good spirits about it. She's like, well, he was far away and didn't turn around. And I'm like, oh, boy. Like, what are you going to do? I'm like, you're a midget. Like, I'm sure you've dealt with comments like that your entire mm-hmm. life. I'm sure it's not pleasant, but it's not the end of the world. Mm-hmm. You got to hear that it's coming from a kid. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. But I, just, I realized, I'm like, there's, there's no midget. Everybody else here? And I was just like, I don't know. Yeah, I'm like, you know, you're a kid, and it's, it's innocent. It's just, yeah. you're making a very oh, loud yeah. observation. No. We were all thinking it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did I tell you when we what happened when we went to the business Costco over there by the Lowe's off Oyster in South City? Mm-mm. You know they put up that Costco right there, and it's just it's a business one. It's not like the normal like uh, the one where they have like the clothing and mm-hmm. socks and shit like that. Have you ever been in one of these? Mm-hmm. Dude, they're awesome. Really? Yeah, I will only go to that Costco from now on. Like a Sam's Club? Better. So you walk in, but it's all it's all like business stuff like for restaurants and stuff like that. They got mm-hmm. like. All like the big cooking utensils, the yeah. gigantic freezers and stuff like that. Right when you walk in, it's probably the like same size as a normal Costco, but literally the back half of the store is just a walk-in freezer of meat. It and it's how I picture heaven. You oh. walk into this refrigerated room, and as far as the eye can see, it's just meat, and it's awesome. Whoa. And they have, but they have different kind of meat. Like normally, like you know, the Costco they got like the blue, you know, bottoms and everything. Yeah. So it's like USDA choice, whatever, like that. They got different things. Like some stuff is that, some stuff is like the vacuum sealed stuff. I bought some ribeye yeah. there. Good, yeah. dude. It was mm. so good. So we go in there, and because uh, we we just left the Lowe's, I had to get stuff for one of the rentals. And I was like, oh, you know, I've never been in this one. Let's hop in real quick. It's so clean because no nobody goes there other than just like business mm. people. It was amazing. It was unbelievably clean. Oh. Their staff was super super friendly, which which is rare in its own right. You know, used to regular Costco people. Yeah. Well, and then so it's nice because the parking lot's relatively small. So even though it was a normal sized Costco with just different things, mm-hmm. there was nobody in there. Oh. It was. I mean, we were in it. Like, if we didn't just like go looking for stupid shit just to see what it was like, yeah. we could have been in and out for, like the better part of six minutes. In a Costco? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was awesome. And uh, I mean, they had like they had like packaging stuff too. Like, I got some stuff for Black Crane, like to mail out packages. They had different size envelopes and things mm. like that. So it made it really nice. And you know, typical Costco, great yeah. deal. So I saved a bunch of money getting stuff like that. Wow. And uh, but they had all sorts of really neat things. But we're walking around and she's she's just in the carts because I don't want to just because yeah. you know she's like a puppy. Ooh, something shiny! Run over here! And because they have all like the candy for you know the resale, so they have the gigantic you know like eight pounds of chocolates you, mm-hmm. you know for for individual resale. Mm-hmm. And uh, she's like, oh, we need that. I'm like, no, we don't need that. <laughs> but we're going through the last couple aisles. And this guy walks by and he's got two little boys in his carts, right around the same age as Audrey. So right around, you know, that three, four year old stage. And I didn't realize there was a lady behind me. And when we're shopping, she asked for, you know, all ball things. <clears throat> and I try, I try and keep things fun or she's still going to like think of things. So when I tell her no, it's not just a straight no. Yeah. So it's like, oh, they have ice cream. <laughs> There's no such thing as ice cream. That's made up. Wait, what? She's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's like, Keep the brain just kind of guessing. And uh, and so this, this guy walks by with these two boys, and she's like, that boy looked at me. And I made sure that he was, you know, a couple aisles away before I responded to this, but I didn't know there was someone behind me. And I was like, I don't like him. She was like, he was whistling. He was singing. I was like, he was singing you a song? Yeah. I don't fucking like that kid. And this lady behind me is dying. And I was like, no boys ever. All boys are stinky. They're yeah. gross. And she was like, you're a boy. And I was like, no, I'm dad. It's different. It's different. Nice. But uh, the same day, did I tell you that she tough talked me in the kitchen? What do you mean? <laughs> so a couple months back, she was eating something and, uh, and Jetta wanted some of it. So she just came by and like took a bite out of it. And she was like, hey, that was mine. Hey, it's got your germs on it. And so Jetta's response was, it's okay. We have the same germs. 
So that stuck in her head. Ah. So whatever, oh, I went, I went to give her like a multivitamin or something and I just put it in my hand and I was holding it out and I went back to doing what I was doing, just expecting her to grab it. Well, she licked it out of my hand like a dog. And so I got like this like giant like wet saliva in my hand. And my initial reaction was, ew. And she looks at me and she goes, we have the same germs. Starts to walk away, comes back, gives me like this real stern face. And she goes, remember that. And walks away. <laughs> and I'm just, I'm like, what do I live in? I live in like a bad sitcom. Like, <laughs> Remember that? Yeah. Jeez, dude, your daughter's awesome. All right, we should probably get some official podcast stuff. All right. I'm, you got me all concerned about this yes and no answer segment. Let's go over your, uh, your first. So I probably have till about 12, 12, I'm sorry, 1. Okay. 1, 10, 40 minutes, is that long enough-ish? Yeah. Mine, mine's minutes. pretty simple. Okay. Man, we got some super good cherries the other day from Whole Foods. Really? Yeah, I don't even like cherries, and they were bomb. We had uh, somebody bring by some cherries. They got done cherry picking up in the, up in the North Bay. Oh, nice. Our neighbor got them by. That was super cool. Yeah. I'm going to take Audrey down when I pick her up from school. We're going to head down to Bob's Markets. You ever been out there? Uh, no. Uh, go out to like Half Moon Bay, take one south, and just drive down the coast. Oh, yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So good. Is it? They have the best limes there. Limes. I don't know why they're so good there. They're just good. Yeah, because then we do uh, them tomorrow, we'll cook tacos. Like yeah, we just do like ground turkey or bison, uh, and then just cut up a couple of them to squirt them on there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Bob's. Uh, oh, dang, John is early. That looks nice. Yeah, dude, that thing is so cool. See, those things are fucking bank. Why are they so expensive? Because they didn't make very many of them. Is that what it is? Yeah. I saw a Defender yeah. driving by the other day. Really? Yeah. I don't see those very often at all. No, they're like 100 grams. Top speed, 48 miles an hour. Woo! <laughs> all right. So let's see here. Should you going on social media, the fakeness of it? We can do the social media thing. We can do your thing first. So mine's, mine's not pressing. All right. So um, I thought just going on goal setting. Um, oh, I like that. Yeah. Like how to actually go about setting just ma- making realistic goals and just use them as a stepping stone. Exactly. Do one, hit another one. I like that. So I just a few notes I have. Um, goal setting prerequisites, like determining what is realistic, first of all. That's tricky. Content. Yeah. Um, available time, overall age, training age, new elements involved, the skills you might have to learn, um, injuries you had, training history, actual capabilities, whether you're doing it for time or for completion. And then will it be fun? So those kind of things to, to take into mind. And then... Goals. Well, this, this parlay is really good into one of the guys I just sponsored. He's got herniated disc. Yeah. 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 For payments. And that way, if you had a bankruptcy trust, you kind of um, And then setting expectations. So is it for fun or is it for a competition? Or I'm sorry, completion. Or is it for time? Um, and if it's fun, the minimum things needed to be able to complete it. So I need to be able to run X amount of miles for that. Sorry. Um, for time, max effort. You need to determine what your max effort is. And then uh, creating a new personal best as opposed to just for fun, which is just give it your best. Yeah. Um, and then we can expand off of that. So Man, some of those are kind of tricky. Has a little 25. Exactly. Set trying to how do you how do you acknowledge you know your own limitations? Yeah, and that's kind of a few things that I think we should really delve into is actual capabilities and actual foresight of what's going on, yeah. as opposed to just what they might see on social media or TV or this or that yeah. um, to try it out. So that guy's a marine. <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> Are we recording already? Yeah, mm. it's been doing the jibber jabber thing. Mm. Because every once in a while I go back and I listen to the whole thing. Because I'll just be cooking dinner or whatever like that. And I, yeah. I just re-listen. And I'm like, oh, that was actually good content. Keep stuff. that. Or like sometimes I know like certain things to cut out. So I'm like, yeah. okay, like let's make a note. Like cut that out. Yeah. yeah. Cut that out. I feel like full house. 